Hello viewers, I'm SB, and I have an incredible knack for starting the recording right as the music comes to an end. Uh, this is Frozen Synapse 2, of course, welcome back, and we are on our way to this incursion. I'm pretty sure that the smart thing to do here is just to send the strike team. I was looking at our, at our squads. The strike team is right here, they're as close to this as anybody is. Uh, I really don't want to leave our HQ empty at this point, and um, they're still fairly healthy. King Flame is toast, but... Um, uh, everybody else on the squad is alive. We have enough money that we could maybe hire a new mercenary to join them. But at only 33,000, we don't have enough money to get a good mercenary. We could get somebody of a new class, I guess. We've never had an SMG. You know, an SMG is still useful. Better than a pistol, that's for sure. Uh, we could also pick up another grenade launcher. A mine layer? We don't we haven't used a mine layer yet. A normal smoke grenade. And I wish there were more toxic grenade units available. I really like the toxic grenade. You know what? Let's pick up a mine layer. I know we were trying to save up for some fancy units and I still want to do that. Oh, uh, we also actually just barely cannot afford a mine layer. <laughs> no, you know what? We'll save up. We'll save up. The strike team without King Flame probably is still up to the task. Uh, that's a police squad. They're probably not on the way to the incursion, maybe? Oh, the, uh, what do you call them? Brightling University of Sele successfully attacked Sonata at Lawns, and it looks like, uh, blue, blue sunlight? Blue sun- what? The crazy ones, you know, Citizen Valor and all them, were on their way. Our strike team's still close, right? We probably should not attack Brightling University to take that relic, given that I, you know, signed a treaty with them and everything. But, oh, we received a $75 dividend on our investment on in Brightling. Okay, so that's interesting. There's, uh, there's monetary reason to invest in the factions that you think will do well. Brightling University defeated the incursion and have recovered the relic. You should consider chasing them down and trying to recover it. You can intercept a squad. You know what? I'm not. I'm not going to do that. If this were one of one of the people who wasn't partnered with us, I would. But also, uh, from a <clears throat> from a plot standpoint, it does make sense for us to uh, allow Brightling University to have some relics, right? Uh, I'm extremely annoyed about this. $10,000 almost off of our funding because I was four minutes late. It's clear that dealing with Sonata is not your foremost priority, Tallest. Yeah, okay. We should, though, what I was going to say is we should keep heading over here because I'm a little concerned about... Hold on, I have to know, what is this faction's name? Blue Sunlight? Blue Sunshine? Blue something. Blue Sunlight, okay. Uh, we need to keep heading over here because the Blue Sunlight squad could hit the Brightling squad and steal the Relic. And if they do that, we need to hit the Blue Sunlight squad and take the Relic for ourselves. Do not cancel the, the uh, travel. Okay, it looks like they're going different directions. I cannot see what this squad is. I mean, <clears throat> we are only one Relic away from... Getting our own, uh, getting to seven and having whatever it is that happens when you get seven relics happen, but. Should we maybe, I'm going to send this squad back, uh, back to the luxury housing, actually. Uh, but I'm not too worried about Brightling University picking them up. And also, relics show up very frequently. Like, it's been a bunch of episodes and a lot of things have happened, but I'm pretty sure the game started exactly at the new year. It hasn't even been three days in in world time since the beginning of the game, so another relic will appear soon. I'm not worried about it. Uh, Brightly University engineers are attempting to activate their relic. I'm fine with that. Fine with that. We can all work together here. So what we really need to do right now is have everybody regenerate, but also contracts. Let's look for a nice, easy, valuable contract. Attack a faction in a building. I need you to attack Brightling University. 
Are they... I can't see the target of this right now, but I assume that they want me to attack where the relic is. Uh, patrol a building, patrol a building. This is a six hour patrol right next to our, uh, right next to our building. I'm actually extremely okay with this. Let's do this one. So let us send the second defense squad. I do want to use the knife unit more, but it just keeps being convenient to send him places and have him sit there. Alright, Strike Fear 2 is regenerated, so the, uh, the building is not undefended. Let us set up deployment real quick. Not that I expect to be attacked, because we have not seen a single one of these end in the building or checkpoint being attacked, but we should try to be ready for that at the very least. Boy, this place is, uh, this place is really something. I guess we can have, there's just, there's so many doors here. Have this guy stand, like, all the way in this corner. Yeah, look at the number of entrances we have to watch. You know, maybe we should have the guy with the knife standing outside. Just ready to, uh... Ready to call out people coming in as he sees them, and then we can have other people standing behind him. And we don't have to necessarily cover every door, because we'll be aware of the enemies before they arrive. And the dude with the knife is fast enough that he can probably get back inside without getting shot. And also, if he does get shot, like, it's not the end of the world. Alright, actually, hold on. Pistol. Pistol guy watches this door. And then we have rifle guy stand, like, here and watch this whole area. That should be good enough. And again, the odds that that's going to matter are slim. So where are we at on the rest of our squads? Strike team is one unit off of full strength. Everybody, el everybody else is cool. We can make a little bit of money. We could grow this squad out a little bit. Because clearly we need we need more reactive fighters in the squad with the turret to give the turret room to do whatever it is that the turret is supposed to do. So we are receiving uh, dividends. Guests are attacking our forces at corporate office. Well, let's defend it. You know, Guest is making themselves a real uh, real thorn in my side lately. Actually, I guess I made myself a thorn in their side first. Okay, what do we have incoming? We're in our own territory, so there are local militia who may fight for us. Oh yeah, this actually is close to one of our uh, one of our buildings, isn't it? I see pistol and the SMG and pistol. I mean, it's enough to be a distraction. So they have a couple of flamethrowers. They actually only have one unit that's good at reactive combat. What is this? Oh, it's a riot shield. Okay, yeah, the symbols right there. But they do have a minigun and two flamethrowers, so we're going to have to be really, really careful. You will not be able to give them orders until they are alerted by seeing an enemy unit. Well, I mean, that's going to happen pretty shortly here, I think. Right, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to give orders right now, right? Yeah, so. Fortunately, Knife Guy is standing right out in the open. Wow. Wait a minute. Who did the pistol get? Oh, he got one of their pistols. That's not really that impressive. Also, did one of their flamethrowers... One of their flamethrowers shot their rifle guy. Well, that's very embarrassing for them. Hey, here's a question. If the knife dude runs forward, like, what are the odds that he clips this guy? Let's have him like run in and then just run back out. And if he gets somebody in the loop, that's awesome. And if he doesn't, yeah, we lost the knife, dude. It's kind of whatever. Um, by the way, I just now noticed that he is a Garcia Tech knife unit. 
I haven't been paying enough attention to know if Garcia Tech is one of the companies or if it only appears for knife, uh, knife units, but this really makes me think that this guy is a... Garcia Tech on a knife unit makes me think of a particular enemy from Streets of Rage, so I wonder if that's, uh, if that's intentional, that Garcia Tech is like a company that only makes knife units or that appears more often on the knife units. And since they now are... They are now in a very bad position regarding ability to fight at range. I think we just post up our rifle dude and uh, in a position where he can see this corner and he just takes people down as they approach. It's going to be really unsafe for them to approach from this direction. And they have a flamethrower and a minigun and stuff, but what they do not have is any source of indirect fire. They're going to have to get in line of sight to shoot, which means that we are in a good position to shoot them. Have this guy come up as well. Uh, I'm not sure about you. I, there's these half-height things in the street. I don't know what these are, like enormous bollards. But we could maybe pressure from this side a little bit as well. It's dangerous, right? Because the, the range on some of these things is pretty considerable. If I duck as I approach, I can use this thing as cover to, to get an angle, hopefully, to approach some kind of angle. Godspeed, little knife man. <laughs> them, uh, them immolating their own rifle unit, I think is going to really turn out to bite them in the ass. Oh, he almost got him. Got him! <laughs> <laughs> the knife unit is. I'll tell you what, he's fun to use. Like, in the in the situation that we're in right now, he actually can't be an area denial tool, right? I'm kind of curious. If I run him over here, no, he does not. He does not get through before that guy finishes shooting. Because if we can catch any of their flamethrowers or their minigun committed to a shot for the first couple seconds of a turn which we know is a thing that can happen, uh, then the knife will actually be really good at taking them out. All right, I want to I wanna get a nice, a nice wide angle on these dudes. Actually, start aiming, like, here. So I am, I am going to have the knife guy run in again, and we're just going to try to get lucky. Like, hold on. If I try to do this, does this guy have time to make this happen? <laughs> uh, he maybe do it a little earlier. He could get me, but also I could get him. And if he does get me, he's almost certainly dead with the from the rifle. I'm going to try this. I'm just going to run down through here. You know, and then we're going to run around in here a little bit, and then <laughs> let's see what happens. This is a very silly plan, I'm aware. Alright, when you get here, stand up and just be ready to shoot people, I guess. Actually, never mind that. Get there and just be crouched and safe, and we'll figure out what to do with you later. But honestly, the rifle is probably going to clear out this whole thing. Again, I cannot, I cannot overstate how much they screwed up by killing their own rifle unit on the first turn. Alright, go Garcia, go! Oh my god, it worked! <laughs> he actually cannot be stopped. Ah uh, yeah, do that, and then like, I don't know, run around, get back, get back behind cover, I guess. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. He's a very good knife guy. Uh, here's the thing. Stand up. Aim this way. And then what do we want to do with the rifle? It's actually kind of dangerous to approach this uh, makeshift barricade thing that they've done here. Because there are a lot of ways for this guy to abbreviate sight lines as he approaches. And the number one way we could lose this is by letting the flamethrower get too close to the rifle. So I'm inclined to just do... Honestly, this might be too close.
right? I don't want him to be able to step out from behind one of these barriers and immediately execute a lethal shot. There's, there's a good chance that, uh, that our Streets of Rage buddy here is going to handle this anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. I can't believe we caught that other flamethrower running. What on earth is going on with these guys? Why do they keep, like, their fire runs out and they just stand still? It's very strange, but Knife Dude kicked, uh, picked up three very serious kills there and has definitely earned a name. And I think I know what it's going to be. Well, this is embarrassing for you. I hope that we get paid extra. That would be cool. Yeah, what's up? You can't simply ignore the rapid inroads you're making across the city. I thought I had the element of surprise at corporate office, but you trashed us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I took the incredible step of having a guy stand outside and wait. Uh, I demand investment. Okay. That, fair enough. Uh, no, the second defense squad does not need orders. Stay in the building. Also... I only kind of discharged a firearm onto the street. Mostly I knifed people on the street, which is something that I think I'm allowed to do. I think that's within my purview. Alright, let's uh, continue to accelerate time. I noticed that they did not give me any money specifically for defending the building. We are getting very frequently paid, though, for our investments, so maybe we should, uh, maybe we should make more of an effort to invest on people. Blue Sunlight is protesting against the university in Denovis, and they want us to, uh, they're gonna want us to stop that protest. My guess, from seeing the way that Blue Sunlight rolls, is that this isn't a bunch of people with signs showing up to protest. This is a bunch of people who are protesting with assault rifles threatening innocent people. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and deal with it immediately. We're on it, Madeline. Uh, Strike, Strike Fear 2 is probably the squad for this, but I I kind of do want to throw another body in here, even though we can't afford a good one. Like, the SMG's not that expensive, and it is, it's another gun. We have another choice. We could, we could take a normal smoke grenade, but I don't think that's actually good for us. I mean, we could get another knife. Okay, no, C. Garcia Tech does make other, other stuff. They are not merely a reference to the ridiculous Streets of Rage unit that would just hold a knife in front of it and run directly toward you. <laughs> yeah, let's put an SMG on the squad. Not especially accurate, largely considered inferior to the assault rifle, but it sure is cheaper. So you are on Strike Fear 2, and then we're going to send Strike Fear 2 to go and deal with this problem. And hopefully this will result in quite a bit of extra cash. Also, before I forget, uh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? This is gonna be over the character limit. Uh, you know what? Just Garcia. There you go. You did it. He hopped continuities, and he earned his way into, uh, into this game. Let us go and intercept their quote-unquote protest group. Bright Link University is engaged in a truce with the Diamond Brothers after resisting their attack. <coughs> Alright. Let's call up Denizen Valor and tell her that she needs to leave. See you're traveling around Nilf somewhat aggressively. I worry about the purity of your motivations. We shall need to conduct a search of your squad. Obviously, I will not be allowing that to happen. Uh, can't quite see what's happening. So we're not actually at the university. Right, like if I went around this... Oh no, I'm actually in the university. Yeah, attack their checkpoint. Screw them. No, you know what? This is not the group that's conducting the protest. This is their security squad for the group that's conducting the protest. And they are, uh, they are outfitted, that's for sure. Religious protester. 
Uh, so there, there's no... Oh boy. No deployment here. I'm just dead in a bunch of places. <laughs> yep, not good. Well, this might work out. So I'm a little worried about the knife. If the knife rushes us, I think that's actually pretty bad at this range. Oh wow, he actually fired. What a hero. This, uh, this first turn is going to be a real, real desperate situation. I hate the fact that you can only fire over cover that's extremely close to you. So with that, if that actually gets to blow up there, it does create smoke here. Like, we might, we might be okay, but we're going to lose bodies, and if we lose bodies, we're going to go into the next thing even less prepared. I honestly don't think we have a better plan than this, though. Okay, wait a minute. If I move this guy, he dies. He dies no matter what. Unless they move. In which case, me moving is probably safe and it buys me, you know, time to get real cover. If I delete the aim order, just, like, get to cover quickly. Maybe get to cover quickly and then crouch? Because I want to still have a good unit left after all this. And this first turn is going to play out as it's going to play out, and then we're going to need people who are actually good at the thing. And I actually am just going to have this, the turret stand perfectly still, and let's see what happens. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Maybe we should have sent more bodies. Oh! Hey, the turret actually fired! Okay, so what did we lose there? We lost... SMG... But that's it! It's actually not a bad turnout. And the SMG unit did clip somebody, too. Okay. Uh, yep. Hostile. That's true. Oh no, that was their faction activity. They had set up a, a checkpoint, like, on the road outside the university. This is another protest squad. They didn't really give us that much extra funding, but we got that and the contract pay, so it's pretty nice altogether. Can I... I could hire another unit for this squad right now, right? Hide near the road. Just jump in the bushes outside the university. Because we have the money now to put a real unit in this squad. Ah, uh, we can't quite afford an assault rifle, though. I'm just thinking, like, maybe it makes sense for us to wipe out this other blue sunlight squad right here. Or maybe take down some of their stuff. Because they're starting to be a persistent issue. Where's their HQ at? We probably shouldn't attack while they have two teams in place. I think we either need to build up a little bit more, or... Ugh, man, maybe we need to fall back. I'm a little worried about the number of uh, the number of bodies they have available in this area. Let's retreat. We did the thing we're getting paid for. Let us go home. And obviously, uh, Blue Sunlight's going to be a real problem. I wonder how, uh, I wonder how this works out for everybody. Like, the game is largely procedurally generated, right? The, the specific events and stuff. And so your interactions with the different factions are going to be different. But, it seems to me like Blue Sunlight and Safeguard have pretty antagonistic personalities. So, uh, if you're playing this game and you're having events occur in your game, uh, l let us know in the comments below how different from my experience your experience has been, because I'd really, I'd really be interested in hearing that. Uh, for now, I think let's just run home. Oh, man. 
in conjunction with Safeguard, will be conducting further preemptive action against Sonata. Adpar will coordinate with us in control of 256 Kayani. I don't... Man, I want to do this. Well, we have our squad on the way. That blue sunlight team, like, evaporated? Or they're maybe in this building conducting uh, an operation now? Where else could they have gone in that amount of time? Oh, we don't really have a choice, right? We have to, we have to send Strike Fear, so... Probably we need to buy another body. We could we could buy a shotgun. Shotgun guys seem to be actually legitimately very good. Alright, let's do it. Let's go. Uh, we're about to run into that protest group. Oh no, okay. The protest group is still on the street. I, I think my icon was hiding theirs. Ignore them. Denizen Valor. If they attack us, we defend ourselves, but if not, I think Brightling can handle them. And also, uh, we're not getting paid to fight them this time. Nope. Okay. No ignoring them shall be done. Well, we definitely don't surrender. So now we have to... We have to win this pretty cleanly so that we can have enough bodies to go and do the Sonata thing. By the way, this is part of what I really like about things like this. Like, the first game was very, um... Ugh, more rifles, too. First game was very focused on... Okay, my grenade's over here. First game was very, like, single mission. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I like I like the gameplay, obviously. We want to move forward here just enough to be able to fire the grenade where we need it to be. And then use the cover of the grenade to get to the wall. My main concern is this guy running forward to knife me. No, we're so slow. Holy crap. <laughs> the turret might handle it, but also he's going to get killed, right? Um, and I like the single mission gameplay and everything, but what I like a lot about this strategy layer is that it adds context, which makes uh, gives you a little bit more granularity in your results. You know, in a game that's just a series of stringle mi single missions strung together, every, every outcome is I won or I lost. But in situations like this, there's a lot of different types of won, right? The fact that we lost our SMG unit on the last mission has weight. That that makes us less effective here. If we lose two guys here, that's going to make us less effective in the incursion. And I really like that kind of context. Um, so our turret's just dead, right? And he doesn't seem to be a great unit in the first place, but uh, if he... If he's able to hold some enemies down for a minute here, it looks like he can at least clear out, uh, you at least clear out the knife guy, probably. I think this is, I think we leave him in the street. I don't think there's anything better we can do with him. It looks like we won't be able to squeeze along there, so actually our pistol guy is probably in a really bad position here. But you know what we could do is just have him run forward. Okay, I hope there was that he would draw some attention. I think that's probably not going to happen. But you know what? If he makes it over to here, he's at least in range to be useful. Scoped rifle is more effective at this really long range than their rifles are, so hopefully that'll enable me to get some kills. I don't know what they're all going to do. Can you squeeze through here? No, okay. That means it's probably safe to have Shotgun Guy move to, like, here? Or, where, like, wherever I... Wherever I can get a little bit of cover without actually being exposed. Just aiming in this direction. Boy, his effective range is really short. I just... I don't want him to be available to the rifles to shoot. I wonder if it's better for him to try to move to this post. He actually, uh, by moving like that, he's going to draw the attention of the rifles, but apparently not get shot in time to actually die. So he draws off a couple seconds of their fire, and that gives us all more room to, uh, to move to where we're going. I think this is the plan. We may well lose our turret this turn, but also it looks like the turret will probably get somebody... Hopefully. 
Yeah, man, it takes the turret a little while to, like, get ready to actually start firing, but once he starts firing... Okay, we may, uh, we may lose our pistol. He's doing exactly the thing I wanted him to do, where he serves as a distraction. You... Maybe, like... Trying to get a slightly better position. It's like, this guy has to crouch approach, right? He's in a lot of trouble. Uh, what we need to do is... Fire another grenade there. Not sure that I want to wait so long before doing it. We could probably... Probably do something more like this. Just try to deny them this approach. Although, is that good? My shotgun guy where he is, maybe I want them to use that approach. You know, he can creep behind the cars and stuff too. What if I move to like here? I'm thinking we can kill this guy, maybe. Maybe. And then I have a position where I can get around behind these cars. We have the front of the cars watched already. I'm gonna have this guy not move. Because this looks under control to me. Wait, do I want to start aiming? Yeah, I probably, probably want to take the shot as early as possible. Although it looks like the turret may have it. Okay, I'm comfortable with this. If we have to sacrifice the pistol to clear a rifle, that is okay, except, of course, that it means that we do not have that pistol to trade for a rifle guy later. Ah, he didn't even fire. He didn't even try to fire. Hmm. This is a relatively safe approach. Okay, he can see one of those positions. Unfortunately, I've made things a little bit difficult for myself over here. I'm pretty surprised that that guy has vision of me. Honestly. Yeah, weird. Okay, what if I went around the other side of the thing? Well, that's... Alright, that's a colorful interpretation of the path. I don't know why I would do that. Oh, that's... That's not like a manhole cover, right? That's a thing. We don't know what this guy's gonna do, but... I want to pressure him. And unfortunately, uh, this grenade makes it impossible for the grenade launcher to approach. I was not expecting the knife to just run into this already extant cloud of gas. He's kind of like committed suicide there, so... Grenade launcher is going to have to wait another turn before it can move. You guys know that you're allowed to fire your weapons, right? Just so we're all clear on that. Like, it's okay to shoot. The grenade launcher actually cannot get to a position where it can fire. What if we do, like... This. Alright, it looks like I can get... I can get in the neighborhood. And then, actually, I don't think I want to fire. I think I want to wait until uh, until I can issue orders again, because I don't know what the what the plan is at this range. Let's give them a couple of seconds to move around, and then I'll I'll fire when I can fire immediately as the turn starts. System. And honestly, turret guy just standing in the middle of the street kind of seems okay, remarkably okay. All right, so I want to fire behind this guy. We're going to try to kill him, but also I'm going to try to make him go forward. And yeah, I mean, you 
<laughs> you guys all seem to know roughly what you're doing. Just keep it up. Not super happy about the very small number of units that I'm going to have available for this uh, Sonata incursion. Turret, uh, the turret, though, is cleaning it up. I don't know what to name our turret unit, but it probably deserves a name. Uh, so that sucks. We lost a lot of... Yeah, losing the shotgun there really, really burns. Well, I think we still have to do this, though. You do not, in fact, need orders. You already have orders. Stupid blue sunlight. You better just be going home. Hmm. Concerned about the direction of this strike team. My strike team is... You know what? Probably ready to fight. If they come over here to attack our luxury housing, I think we got them. We're going to have to do something about blue sunlight, though. Alright, let's see if we can pull this off with a very small number of units. You know, this might be a plot mission that's unfailable, and if that's the case, uh, locking myself in with the very small number of units I have here might have been a terrible plan. The residents have been ser uh, terrified of another Sonata attack. We don't have the ability to, to detect Sonata units in this area, so be on guard. Coordinate with, your, with our team as they make a sweep. If you test your plan, you'll be able to see the safeguard team's movement. Like Captain Grumpy said, we're operating under dark conditions. If you can find a purple zone on the map, get a unit to it. It'll enable me to patch in and get our satellite coverage going again. Alright, uh... I do not see a satellite coverage area. So this is our quote-unquote friendly team. There is not a relic available, but we will get paid. Well, turret guy doesn't really have a play that isn't just like stand in, stand in a, like pick a good spot and wait. So maybe that's, this is his good spot where he waits. Baron Boom has to get close enough to things to actually be able to uh, pick targets. Their plan is what? They're just going to kind of generally fan out. I kind of headed in this direction, so I'm going to have... Baron Broom approach from this angle. And for the moment, honestly, the scope maybe goes here. I'm gonna watch like this. Set up my angle of fire so that I'm watching that uh, that cover area, but also this doorway. And we have cover from anything on this arc. Oh, hold on. Did I set a firing arc for you? I didn't really. Same deal, pretty much. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see what we discover. Well, no vision so far, and I, like... They're not paying any attention to this angle at all. It makes me a little nervous. But also, like, I don't want to... Okay, they're gonna go that way. Yeah, I didn't want to fire my grenade and have it kill one of them. Get as far back as we can while still making this shot cover this doorway. And then we can move to here and <laughs> wait for them to uncover more enemies. Since it kind of looks like there's nothing threatening us here, can we... I can maybe make my plan to move up to this position. Okay, that's weird. It just deleted my waypoint when I tried to move it close to the van. I have no idea what the effective range of this turret unit is. It seems to be as long as we have ever seen. Oh, had a vision there for a moment. I think that was a sniper. We saw a shotgun, a rifle... Okay. I need to... crouch as I pass here, for sure. Because there's definitely a guy in there. And then, like, somewhere around here... Just shoot a grenade into that area and keep moving. 
Okay. They have a sniper, and if that sniper is still where we last saw him, which could be the case, then our turret is dead? Hey, guy. Ignore enemies for a moment here. Yeah, alright. It's about to get, uh... It's about to get a little ugly. Once you're back at this position, start aiming this way again. Hopefully that, <laughs> that'll be good enough. I'm gonna have this guy actually back up. So you know what? He probably has to start aiming back here though, because I don't want him to be I don't want him to be walking this way while facing this way. This is bad. This is dangerous for us. When you get to here, how long does that have you sitting still for? Wait a while. I'm actually fine with that, though. Yeah, really wish I had more guns. This is a dangerous mission to come to with only this many units. Well, at least this time there actually are enemy units around, and we're not just murdering civilians on the off chance that they might want to become an enemy unit. Alright, could you please... Oh! I see, that guy has cover. Well... I mean, yeah, keep this. This is your shot. Just if he if he stops crouching, <laughs> you got him. I trust you. So hold on. Did the during any po any part of that did okay? The turret was aiming. This guy's dead. That sniper is still there, and we have to. I like. Unfortunately, Baron Boom is the one who's going to have to deal with that. Maybe stand up. Move to here just just to get there quickly. Crouch again. Try something like this. That's pretty dangerous in terms of a. Pr yeah, maybe I don't want to do that. <coughs> maybe it's stand. Run through here. Well, we definitely have to wait outside the door before attempting that maneuver. And make sure that this is timed such that we do not stop for a long time at this node. That might still be too long. Let's be ready to fire the moment he hits the node. My concern is that that's too much. This is too much time in their line of sight. So actually, uh, delete those two, and, like back up to the corner afterward. Ah, but I'm not. If I do this, I'm not safe from this rifle. And it's possible Safeguard's rifles will handle it, even though Safeguard uh, objectively cannot have riflemen anymore. It's just not a thing that could be true. Uh, but also, it's possible they won't. Not that much less time. I think I do have to run back outside. I hate this very much. This is so dangerous. I don't want you to move. This guy probably has to, though, right? He's not actually useful where he is now. Well, I suppose that depends on what those rifle guys do, though. Because if I can... Yeah, if I can maintain line of sight down this corridor, we might be able to actually squeeze them. I'm going to stay put. Alright, let's try it. Stay put with the scoped rifle as well, just waiting for an opening. Uh, I think that they don't have vision of our units at all times as well, so like this might actually work, because they might not realize this dude is here. Yeah. Oh, there's like a... There's a half dozen dudes in here. Also, a guy that very nearly got grenaded. That sniper is a problem. Uh, we got valuable intel here, but man, I wish I still had a unit that could just lock that door with a bunch of explosive gas. So this... 
This is bad. Okay, so all the all the safeguard units are dead, and it's just my scoped rifle and my turret against everybody. Good. Good, then. Well. Sorry, we should go around the back side of the car. Uh, I don't see that I have much opportunity to survive in my current position, being attacked potentially from an entire, like, 135 degree arc. So, let's approach the sniper. We can definitely win that fight at that range. And then, this guy needs to... Boy, I have no idea what the range is where a turret beats a sniper. It takes the turret a long time to aim. And it takes the sniper kind of a long time to aim. I'm wondering if I should, like, fall back and... Nah, you know what? It's gonna stay right here. I'm covering this approach. It's gonna be hard for enemies to sneak up on our uh, on our scoped rifle this way. Yeah. Good luck to us. Apparently we're going to need it. Yeah, all the safeguard units are dead. That guy got himself killed trying to approach. Snipers do not fire well while moving. And then... Uh... Okay, he did fire, it didn't matter. What do I do with you? If this sniper didn't exist, we would have the range advantage, and we could uh, we could play to that. However, instead we have to figure out some other kind of play. I guess what I could do is... I could stay over here behind this wall of, of tall things. It's going to be difficult for people to approach the turret. They're going to have to go out and around. And if I keep this guy, like, here, maybe. Hold on. I'll delete all your current orders. If I keep him here, watching in this direction, we might be able to just take the sniper if he tries to get us from this area. And also maybe to cover this approach a little bit. Like, the focus diamond definitely has to be over here. I'm going to try that. Get to a position where I have some cover from some angles, watch the other angles, and just hope that the crossfire of these two can keep each other safe. But this is a this is a grim situation. I did not realize how many uh, enemy units there were in that building. Yeah, actually, like the turrets, the turrets target acquisition range is really good. I am actually just gonna sit here for another five seconds. It takes him a long time to do it, but he can he can pick people up from really far away. So like let's say this dude is trying to get over here. <coughs> this guy's trying to get over here. What does that look like? It looks like victory. Provided that we don't also get attacked by other units at the same time. Because obviously, the biggest downside of having only two guns is that we can only really be defending against two units at once. Get him. Okay, so that guy is going around back. We got several guys going around back. Oh man, I really want to let him finish taking this though. Okay, that guy's got a hell of an angle. He's going to win at that range. So what we do instead is crouch. Part of the value of all this cover. Creep forward. Or honestly, we don't even need to crouch. We can just break his line his line of sight. That's such a narrow angle. If I take two steps this way, that probably breaks it right there. And then I need to be covering this. Right, because this is what they're trying to do. Apparently I need to take a few more steps than that. Not sure I agree. Really? That's definitely not right. I hate the fact that the laser sight disappears, so you can't... Huh. Okay, well. Duck, I suppose. Okay, so that guy... Oh, he's crouching. I was gonna say, why is it taking him so long to get over there? So he will get range. 
I need to make sure I do this such that I stand up before he comes around that corner. Okay. Yeah, at this node, stand. Kind of looks like he's not going to fire, though. Alright, how about this? Wait. You know, four seconds, maybe? And then turn around. Interesting, the wait command doesn't start processing. Well, hmm. If I throw a continue on site on top of the order queue. Okay. Then he doesn't he chooses not to fire at all. There's no way for me to get him to process a wait command while he's aiming? Is that right? Hmm. Engage, but don't stop on sight and then wait. Will that wait command actually run while he's aiming? No, it will not. Well, hmm, because he needs to turn around at some point, but obviously not right away. This is tough. This sniper being able to shoot me like extremely through the wall is a big part of the problem. And the fact that I can no longer see his laser sight makes this difficult. So yeah, according to the uh, according to the targeting, he doesn't lose vision until here. Boy, I really don't think that's right. Like, look at how close he is to that wall. But yeah, I get I get shot if I'm not crouching, so I gotta crouch. Does suck a little bit. And then I have, I have actual zero plan for dealing with uh, Shotgun Guy. We just have to hope that they choose to be cautious, because sometimes the AI chooses to be cautious in situations where that's not really warranted. I think that's <laughs> realistically our only hope here. Alright. In my experience, the AI is usually too cautious, except when it runs directly into flamethrowers and grenades and stuff. Oh, well that's not good. I had to imagine this range is good for the pistol. Holy crap, pistols are so bad. Well, yeah, but he, he's got me is the point. No, it takes too long. That guy will not still be visible. So you're just dead. Like, pistols are super bad, but also the turret literally won't fire. Because I, I, right now, it, it, I think it's targeting this guy? So it's pretty soon it's going to be a scoped rifle against a shotgun, a pistol, a normal rifle, and a sniper rifle. Uh, this is not winnable, probably. But we got to try. And then, uh, you know, we're going to get a do-over, probably, because I think this is a story mission. So, <laughs> we're actually not allowed to fail at it. Uh, the sniper's approaching, but honestly, I think we have time here. This guy needs to continue on sight and just run. This is only hope. get away because pistols are so incredibly bad but like do I want him to take cover maybe I want him to run like this and just like have the plan be get over here and turn around and shoot people I, I do not assume I will get that lucky, but that would be a pretty good outcome. Alright. He actually can't kill the pistol up close, so this, I think this is our only play with him. Okay. We lose. Well, we can't recover from this loss. I disagree. This is literally, like, there are no stakes here. But alright, let's restart the mission. Right? Th nothing... The plot, the, the main story plot, is not uh, very sensible. 
losing this mission would mean actually nothing to us. This isn't a thing that Sonata's doing. We came to them and tried to attack them. If we failed this mission, we could send another team, we could set up a blockade outside and just not let them... Like, again, ab actually zero stakes here. This could not matter less. Uh, so the safeguard team is dead no matter what we do. We, just, we don't have the manpower to defend them. But... That's actually, like, really bad, huh? Because it means it's my three guys against a huge number of enemies. Safeguard will kill somebody on their way out. But probably not a lot of people. And, like, we could wipe out... We could go after this building and maybe get lucky with some grenades and wipe it out. But if we do that, we still have a huge number of enemies down here to deal with. If we don't help safeguard out down here, they're all going to die and they're probably not even going to kill anybody. And even if we do help safeguard out down here, safeguard still dies and we still have this to deal with. This building is a little bit more defensible. I think we have to try to take this. We'll give this one more shot before we uh, before we call it for today. And where do I want you to stand, actually? Also, I do find it a little frustrating that Sonata's archers fire, or, uh, archers, snipers fire, like, much, much, much faster than my snipers do. Not much to be done about it, but it's annoying. Nope. Around the back of the van. See, so, yeah, I think we gotta, we gotta try to take this out. The scoped rifle guy can just kind of head up this way. That still gives us an angle to shoot people who are running out down here. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else we can do. This is a rough group of units to have to accomplish this mission with. Uh, yep. Just keep going. I guess we could start with a long turn, maybe. So what do you have vision of right now? Wondering how much I want to step forward. Like, I'm sure that this sniper is a real problem. I don't want to be visible to that guy. But right now, I'm covering the, like... We kind of have that angle covered, so this guy can probably just start moving. You probably could fire your first grenade right now. I uh, can't really get very deep in there. I want to cover the door. Maybe we'll get lucky over here. They might they might handle this. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna move up with them. See if we can lend a little bit of support before we double back and go into the building. The sniper is potentially a real problem, but I think I'm covered from the window by this post. And I think our turret has uh has this half cover area over here under control. Okay, we picked off something over here. What was that? It's probably an SMG. Yeah. <laughs> All of the safeguard units are... No, sorry. Okay. They're bad units. are still alive. So that's... That's something. Uh, run across. Then duck. Boy, dangerous. Dangerous times. So we know that there is a shotgun. Oh, there's a shotgun guy right there. 
Okay, so I'm dead then. If I don't, uh, if I don't back out, and I'm probably dead even if I do back out. But, like we gotta, we gotta back up and then start aiming this way, or this way. And this isn't even like there's no sense simulating from there because that's a second and a half old position information. That guy's not there anymore. This is probably a worse approach than the first one. Okay. So we got a break line of sight. You know that's not a person. If there was a guy, like, he's aiming at actually nothing, because we know that there's not a person currently there, which is kind of an annoying thing. Uh, the sniper's gonna keep angling for me. I'm not sure that there's a lot I can do about it. We need to get line of position break, uh, or line of sight break with this, uh, this post, and then from there we need to... Ah, man. God, I wish we could jump over waist-high barriers. I'm just... I'm pretty trapped here, actually. Oh, man, this is bad. Because this guy's probably been approaching this whole time. Yeah, I'm just dead. You try to get lucky with this dude... And we have to try to get lucky, right? Okay, so it's like a year before you can shoot your grenade launcher again. Do something like this. Alright, well, I think this is the best shot we have. Like, we have to break line of sight with the sniper. This is an immediate threat. But it looks pretty bad. We're gonna have to, I think, come back next episode with a new plan for this. Okay, so we break line of sight with the sniper. We get some amount of cover. That's happening, but who knows how valuable it is. There's too many doors over here. Can't cover them all. The sniper's not an immediate threat. We can stay low and keep firing. I mean, you don't get to fire again for almost five seconds, so... Right, if we... if we queue up a shot order now... Yeah, that shot happens like three and a half, four seconds into the turn. So it's not actually... Hmm. I could run back to here. Take cover behind this thing. Maybe fall all the way back to here and just smoke the doorway forever. And maybe give them the opportunity to kill themselves if they want to die. I don't know that I actually have a plan that is any better than that. There's a pretty good chance that this sniper is over here just waiting for me, which is part of why I'm a little nervous about just running for it. Let's try that. Fire and then just like run for the door. That guy will be up. He will be fixing his angle, or he won't. I don't really have a lot of uh, a lot of play on that one. And the turret actually can't fight people at close range. So if I think they're coming around this way, I'm pretty bad shape here. I suspect he gets beat by snipers at very long range as well. So. I mean, I can keep doing this. He's at least locking off some angles of attack against the grenade launcher right now. But this is pretty bad. Okay. That worked. Alright, so we're going to make it to the doorway here.
player as far out as will actually uh, block the doorway. And I'm just going to leave this guy right here. He's going to get some kills, probably. But if we can make the if we can make the available area very short with our grenade launcher over here, we might actually be able to run off quite a few of them. Oh. What got him? I didn't even see it. Uh, looks like I, he got hit from this direction, maybe, given the way the bullets were hitting there. Yeah. Literally nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. Uh, so why don't you walk around here, duck, and then your job is this thing for a while, unfortunately. Like, it's not going to be very exciting to play out this strategy, but I'm curious how, uh, curious how many enemies will run into the cloud before they make us come out. I mean, we get some we get some coverage, right? The next shot takes place almost as soon as the last shot ends. I think I probably want to be ricocheting them off of the door frame a little bit. There'll be guys over there. Wow. That was four kills. Uh, I mean, this is lame, but if it works, who am I to argue, right? System primed. That was four of them ran into that. I feel a little bit bad about this. Like, what if the AI just, like, can't handle this strategy? What if I could sit in here an infinite amount of time and keep doing this? They can't actually... Stop me, right? I'm in a position where I'm not... I don't think I'm shootable from here. I think I have cover enough. Yeah, we're going to have to come out at some point. Well, it looks like our grenade covers the door for this turn. And then we'll, uh... I guess we'll try something. Is still getting people though. <laughs> All right. So how many turn? How many seconds into this turn? It, it, it evaporates almost immediately. As far as we know, there are only two enemies left. They're pretty far away. They're pretty long range. That's not great for me. I hate the fact that this, this is going to evaporate at the beginning of the turn. That's actually pretty dangerous for me. Stand up, go to the doorway, yeah, give me something like this, huh, I can't, oh, I'm not, not far enough away from the wall, there we go, just like block a door, wait, I saw it, I saw the shot I wanted, there we go. Try to get some vision here. And again, I think there's a non-zero chance that I could uh, I could survive by just doing this forever and letting them run into it. But I feel bad about that strategy. Like, also, I don't think it's fun to watch. Let's see if we can if we can figure out where they're at on this. Oh well, it turns out one of them's dead. The other one is right there. Okay, they're going to have a hard time actually getting the angle on me. I can't believe that we might win this. It's so, like, if this guy decides to go this way... He could have an angle, but he can't get a shot. It takes snipers so long to aim, but I think we're probably safe doing this. He was moving down and to the left relative to our current viewpoint last time we saw him. So this is my this is my guess for where the grenade will catch him. 
and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Right, that's still... Yeah, that's still... It's pretty deep, but it still gets the doorway. And then as soon as you've done that, st stand and run back in here, maybe? Now that it's one-on-one, -on -one, this has certainly taken on an interesting character. I don't know what to do here. He could be anywhere. The last time we saw him was seven seconds ago. At this point, he could be anywhere. You know what, now that I think about it, I'm not happy about this order. Running in, running into a space where they ha he has one doorway to cover is probably not the play. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't get all the way inside either. Well, to be perfectly honest, I would not have been happy with let's just spam the doorway forever. And actually, it probably wouldn't have worked. Because if this guy had just taken this position, he could have stood there all day. So... All right, well, I think that's what we're going to call this for today. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow with some kind of new inventive plan for dealing with this horrible situation Safeguard has gotten us into that apparently we have to deal with in order to win the game, even though there's no good reason for us to care about this at all. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time for that thing that I just said, and we'll see you then.